Today, we're going over 10 different categories of cursed LEGO minifigures. Ooh. <laughs> Finally sold out. More accurately, we're going over the minifigures that LEGO decided to leave behind. Or some figures maybe they should leave behind. <laughs> Mini dolls. This style of minifigure is the first thing that comes to mind when you use normal LEGO and minifigure in the same sentence. It's the classic iteration that has been around for quite some time. The short figure, while not nearly as old, is probably the second most recognizable and common minifigure type out there, usually saved for small characters or children. The minifig is a relatively new addition, but it allows for more unique possibilities as well as a more realistic world with the age range of not child or not adult. The tall fig, while predating the mid fig by a number of years, is not nearly as common, but it was recently revitalized with new Avatar Na'vi minifigures. Its proportions are completely out of anything that would be considered normal. If you wanted to say make real cursed minifigures with these and give tall legs to short people, you could. You didn't think I'd work cursed minifigures into this because I didn't think I could. However, these slope sizes aren't always enough and you need something just a little bit bigger. Big figs might sound similar to tall figs, but they delineate pretty heavy from the Lego standard. But those hunks of plastic do not stagnate. For example, you could have a troll that's pretty large compared to most minifigures and gets the job done or you could have a troll that's the size of a house. The concept of scale with big figs can range wildly and you can ask multiple people and they'll say one doesn't count and the other one does and this one doesn't count, but this one does. The real takeaway to focus on is the fact that there are minifigures that are also big. Micro figures are confusing in their own way and the confusion is distilled from the consistency that Lego does not normally show. See, this is a micro figure. This is also a micro figure. This is a micro version of a figure, and this is a micro person, which is just another way to say micro figure. These micro figures or board game figures no longer exist, but you, you slap it on a minifigure and oh boy, that's 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 looking real cursed. Nano figures or statuettes are actually a pretty good representation of a minifigure shrunk down. That's why you can see it so commonly in stuff like Ant-Man. Things like the good fairy, a random trolls character, the buildable Mario, babies, or whatever other types of miscellaneous figures that come throughout the years come and go of specialized elements and just cease to exist afterwards. The first generation of minifigures given to the consumer barely represented a human being. The only things that carried over to modern day figures were the heads and some of the head gear. I guess you can make some sticky icky cursed minifigures from this, but the real fun to be had is trying to make them fit into the current day Lego world by adding more modern parts to it. These dudes on the other hand do not require any at home assembly to be anything along the lines of cursed. I personally think the little elephant with the raincoat and the hat is kind of adorable. Out of all the retro styled figures, the puppet minifig is the most inconspicuous. While some come out of the box looking like a nightmare, this one doesn't have that much on the face of it. But you can change it real quick. There are a ton of one-off minifigure designs out there that I could spend a whole video going through, but instead of doing that, let's waste the concept and burn through them real fast. Jabba the Hutt, it could be considered just a big fig, but I don't know, you be the judge of it. Long bendable arm minifigures, what can they do out of their very specific niche design? I'm not quite sure, but look how long and bendy they are, ooh. Centaurs, they're horse people. Horses, minifig minions. I swear I did not put the eyes on this to go with the theme of cursed minifigures. Ooh, hot topic. Ooh, let's make fun of that. Goblins from the elves themes. Look at these little dudes. Look, look at them go. Ice cream minifigures. Different from the ice cream minifigures, but these ones are still technically minifigures despite not looking like minifigures because they're just a pile of random bricks. But aren't all minifigures just a pile of random bricks? Mario style minifigures. Not the buildable characters, but the, the minifigure. Just a rectangle with a computer in it. Tall minifigures, as we discussed earlier, are just figures with extra long legs. However, Tall minifigures are figures that are Tall. The first of the tall figures is actually the oldest one on this video being the homemaker style characters They're just a tall drink of Bricks stacked up on top of each other. There are specialized elements like wacky waving inflatable arms or unmarked head but The real fun comes with the hair pieces that have ridges on the inside allowing it to lean really far forward or really far back So you can get that Peyton 40 yard manning hairline There is an argument to be had that these next ones aren't really minifigures like the giant from Harry Potter or Groot from Marvel but what can't be argued is that uh they're Lego. When you look at this, your first thought might be, that's not a real Lego product, but you are wrong. That is a Lego Belleville minifigure. And when you look at this, your first thought might be, that's not a real Lego product, but you would be wrong. That is a Lego Technic figure. And when you look at this, your first thought might be, that's not a real Lego product, and you would be wrong. That is Galador, which was Lego. And when you first look at this, you might think, that's garbage. And you would be right. Galador, Belleville, and Technic figures all have one thing in common outside the fact that they're 
on average, pretty tall. And that is, they should not have been made ever. Belleville figures are essentially Lego compatible dolls that were trying to appeal to a lady-centric audience, and it did not work. But we did get one thing out of this, and that was the Belleville baby, which if you want a, a cursed minifigure, I cannot think of a better example. Technic minifigures have more in common with an action figure than they do the normal minifigure, but what they lack in cohesiveness, they make up for an... I don't, I don't know, what do you want from me? What more can I say about different random minifigures? Oh, it's weird, it's unnormal, it's cursed! Dance, monkey, dance! I do know what I want from you though, and that's to subscribe because you've clearly been enjoying it, you've watched this far. Look, monkey's dancing, subscribe. <laughs> Droids are a classification of figs that an uh, unhealthy amount of people would deem unworthy to carry the title of minifigure. Star Wars droids are probably the first thing that comes to mind, but you might be shocked to hear that they've actually made things outside of Star Wars. Exoforce is an example of this, not an excellent one, seen since it's just weed bait to get anime fans to come suckle off the teat of Lego, but it is an example, as are green Martians that partially glow in the dark halfway, hero factory figures that do not glow in the dark partway. Bionicle has two, two and a half versions of minifigures, with the first being one solid piece of plastic, similar to early Star Wars minifigures like Saboba and Tan Saboba. Second version of it, and the half version where they updated the arms, have much more flexibility and posability and parts usage and swappage available, but they are ugly. And in this case, they are cursed. <laughs> While on the topic of toy autonomous droids, we have mini dolls. Lego throughout the decades has tried a number of weird, wild ideas that just do not fit its system. And unlike all of those other things, mini dolls refuse to die. I have already conversed upon the topic of why mini dolls aren't up to snuff when compared to their counterpart mini figures, and if you'd like to watch that video, it's down below. But you are not here to get an expertise opinion on why mini dolls are objectively bad. You are here to hear about different variants of objectively bad mini dolls. And I think something about cursed figures. I'm not sure why you're here, actually. They have different versions, like the fact that some have shorts, and some don't have shorts. Or like how some have dresses, and others do also have dresses. Some mini dolls are short, like short minifigures, but much, much worse. And not a single mini doll features the classic yellow color on any of their figures. But man, if they did that, red shirt, blue pants, generic smiley face, that would be awful. <laughs> Duplo has often gone under the radar of Lego figures. With four different generations of minifig styles, there has been a whole host of weird and wild things they have done with them. The first generation was real simple with a two by two base and a head on top. And that head could also double as a cat or a dog. The second version or generation of minifigures actually had hands and feet and looked like a human figure and not just some amorphous piece of plastic that had kitty cat ears. Now they had some weird ones, one might even say cursed, but they, they would move on and refine this with generation three, where they went back to the two by two style of minifigure. They did redefine the minifigure style. Who, for example, they could have done, and they did do later on, normal style minifigures, but instead of doing those uh, originally, they did a not that. Four Juniors figures, or more commonly referred to as Jack Stone figures, are this weird amalgamation, incest, baby, love child of Lego figures and Duplo figures. Jack Stone figures have all of the weaknesses of their Duplo parents. They're overly simplified. They can't come apart and be customized. They have noses, but they have all of the strengths of the Lego figure as well. They are yellow mostly. Man, if there's anything more cursed than a nose on a minifigure, it just, I don't, it just, it would have to be toes. There are toe prints on minifigures, not just one, but they're two separate examples. Why would you ever put toes on a minifigure? What the fuck is wrong with you? 